There we go. Hi, Ramona. Hi. Where's Hi. Penny? Hello. <laughs> you are completely not on the screen. I see that. Um, huh. <laughs> you might want to go into your settings and uh, disable background for a second, then put it back on. It might. It might okay. Like that. Okay. Alrighty. It's right. You haven't missed anything yet. <laughs> no, we haven't started. Don't worry. I'm, I'm. I am so hot. I want to keep my lights off. Oh my oh. God! It's so hot. Well, uh, here, here it's cooled down. It's actually a hundred and one. Jeez. I, I just I went out know, early, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know why I went out. <laughs> yeah, um, it's hottest it's been here is 122 Fahrenheit. So it, it's dry heat, so it's not so bad. Uh, when, like where you are, Katie, you get very moist, so that would be hell. <laughs> in Japan, where Ria is, uh, summer, you're coming into the storms now. And so, oh, really? if, yeah, September, uh, storms, oh, really? uh, and then are uh, very hot and muggy. Mm. Yeah, sweaty. Right? Yes. Uh, when I first came to Japan, I didn't know this. And mm. everybody kept give it, giving me face cloth. I had many, this many. <laughs> I, I, why did you give me face cloth? Nobody told me about weather. And then one week later, my face is dripping. And uh, Yumi said to me, where's your face cloth? And I went, what? <laughs> I thought they were small handkerchiefs. They said, no, face, <laughs> wiping face. <laughs> so September, very wet. Uh, you <laughs> yes, very humid in Tokyo. The climate changed uh, compared to 10, 10 years ago. Mm. Since the, the great earthquake in 2011, the climate changed. And Tokyo is very, very humid and, and you know, hot. Mm. Very mm. dangerous. Yeah. I knew that earthquake was going to happen. I, I was talking with Remy. Mm. And she is uh, eight floors up in her apartment. And I said, are you safe here? Because there's a tidal wave coming. And she said, oh, I think so. But her area, she's just near Disney World, uh, uh, Disneyland, whatever you call it. Uh, and so she's on the bend uh, of the, of the uh, ocean coming in the inlet. So the wave came beside it. It didn't come in in there. Mm. So unfortunately, we know we lost many people. I, to this day, I don't know how many students I lost. You know, it's a shame. And I pray it never happens again. Because mm. Tokyo is right on the fault line. And uh, the world is shifting because of COVID and no aeroplanes and so on. Uh, and so the earth is finding its new balance. Mm. And uh, that includes more earthquakes mm. and some serious ones in the ocean. I know, that's what it told me. Mm. But uh, I don't know which country. <laughs> um, Margaret, the, the number you gave me is incorrect. It, what, incorrect? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it can't be because I'm, she's been calling me all the time. 9284, uh, no, okay, try 928486. Four, eight, 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 six, six, four, zero, five. Maybe I entered them in the wrong order. <coughs> oh, shoot. That's shoot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I think 486 is a uh, cell phone. <laughs> 928 uh, four eight six. Uh, I'm six four zero five. Yeah, it's calling her. So, uh, that's probably her cell phone. Hi, now I can see you, and you have uh, some funny hairdo going on. <laughs> yeah, it's pulled up <laughs> off my neck. No, the the because you have a backdrop. Okay, it, it it's going like this. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of disappearing. <laughs> it's okay you can hear me yeah. all right 
Okay. Um, and uh, Sal, uh, what's his email? I'm in your email now. Uh, Sal, S-A-L-A. -A. You have to search his name. Saladin, S-A-L-A-D-I-N. Saladin Brown. That's it. Yeah, I always forget his last name. It's so simple. Yeah. Which email though? Uh, Malik Brown. There's there's different emails for him. Yes, he keeps changing it. That's the problem. Uh, is it one with the picture? Yeah, that would be working. Okay. Let me go in here and I'll send him the information right now. Thank you. Because he was saying, I couldn't find it. I was going everywhere looking and, and I said, Facebook. And he said, I don't go, you know, very often. So I don't know. Any of the others say they were coming back? Uh, there should be a couple of people that are coming. Uh, let me e message another one. <sighs> Sorry, girls, but you know, if I don't want to miss it, they say they want to come and then they can't find it. So it, it's been a problem. I use the old, uh, uh, the old one to get on. Yeah, it's the same. Second. Okay. Mm, I'm going to sneeze. That's something I made. Actually, <laughs> touch it before it happens. <laughs> I don't know if that's good yeah. or not. <laughs> so you're having any luck with your end? Should we start or wait or what? What do you want me to do? What do you mean? Well, you know, if we start the class or should we wait until those people, if they get the message or not? We can start anytime you like, honey. Okay. Um, because uh, it's ten past two, so I I need to set record, right? I've already. Re yeah, you can you press record if you want. Okay, record on this computer, right? Okay, so what we're going to do today is focus on spirit guides and the opposite of that, and um, one of the questions I always get from people over and over again is who are my spirit guides and I want to say categorically here that you have thousands of spirit guides so when people ask who is my spirit guide I have to say that whoever it is okay um is going to be an amalgamation of many guides and they will use one name and they will use a name relative to your perceptions. So for example, if you went to a gem show and you saw a load of Egyptian style jewelry and felt sort of almost possessed, if you like, to buy that piece of jewelry, it's your way of knowing that you have a spirit guide who's inspiring you to buy something that is gelling with you and where you're at in your training as well as with them. But it's important to understand that your spirit guides can change uh, their form and shape and size. So I want to get off, off the psychic ability for a minute and talk about the oneness in terms of as above, so below, God and us below that. Or um, another way to say it is the cosmos versus life all over the cosmos that we don't know versus our own universe. And we are already beginning to understand there are many more planets out there in our uh, universe that we don't even know exist because they're too far away to see. But we've now come to speculate and understand that those other off moons, worlds, whatever they might be that we want to call them, have a life on them. And we finally come to realize that life is constantly moving and shifting and uh, evolving in some way. But in our small brains, and we have to really establish they are small, um, the amount of knowledge and wisdom that we could hold in our brain 
would, would never ever have the ability to house the whole of the universe that is just our universe and all the species that are on it and all the activities that are going on. So when we speculate on, on what is out there in, in that cosmos, uh, we're really uh, putting up a question mark that is not able to be answered. So for example, if we go back to Star Trek and uh, we, th we think about all the different characters they've invented and they put like people come on with horns and their noses are a bit screwed or something and they're all made up like in the movie. And you think, oh, that's, that's an interesting alien. Uh, I could kind of relate to that because I'm actually looking at it and they're actually functioning with uh, some sort of uh, mental uh, telepathy or they have machines in the movie that allow you to uh, translate their language. You know, this is all put in these movies and it's like, wow, this is wonderful. But I asked my spirit guides at the time, I said, how much of that is really possible? And, and the answer was nil. <laughs> because our brains are not attuned to the vibrations and sounds of something else. So a parallel with that was they gave me, if I'm sitting next to my dog and my dog hears something and the ears go up, I can't hear it. My range of hearing is not as wide as an animal. So in the same way, the range of hearing aliens is not in our range. So even if you had an alien get out of a spaceship and stand in front of you, and if they were to be able to talk our language, we still wouldn't understand them because their range of vocal communication would be altered by the fact they're on our planet. So that opened up a whole can of worms for me to ask questions. And they said, well, the ultimate thing is you can only really communicate with aliens through the oneness. And the reason you can, com can communicate with them is because any entity that has lived on another planet somewhere is past, deceased, is now an entity, a spirit, and when they're back in the oneness, the energy of all that is, is constantly moving. And so we're all on a different vibration by then. And so we can then communicate, right? So when you think someone is making Star Wars or something like that, what they're imagining or what they're downloading in their brain to create the characters that they put into these movies and all these kind of stories that are coming out of people's brains right now are all relative to them tapping into the oneness to get glimpses or bits and pieces of beings on other planets and then bringing it forward in a human consciousness and then creating it according to our imagination. So even if we have that tapping in and we have that connection from our spirit, by the time it comes from the back of the brain through into the images, if you've never seen an alien looking like the one that you've just tapped into at the back here, your brain will look for look to like, okay? And when you look for look to like, um, you'll then bring it forward into consciousness. Now, if it's so, alien in that you can't handle the looks alike, you won't see it. You'll, you'll come to a dead end. You, you won't be able to visualize anything. Why? Because your conscious mind is afraid to see the unknown, okay? Now, if I take that back to a spirit guide who's going to appear in front of you, the conscious mind is just the same. It's like, I really wanna see my guide, and I can even feel they're in the room, but I'm nervous to see them because I don't know how they're gonna look and appear to me. And you know, what if, for example, let's make it that a spirit guide wanted to appear to you looking deformed as a symbol that your mindset is deformed, that you're all mixed up and crazy with your ideas, 
they might well show you a picture of a deformed body because when the brain is not impulsing directly through the body in the right way, you become sick and ill. Now, even though you're consciously walking around and you don't feel your body distort in any way or distorted, but maybe you know you're distraught in terms of your emotions, you don't realize that your energy is all bent up inside this body, that it's not flowing productively. So when you sit in psychometry next to someone else, you feel their energy and they make you feel cringy and you want to move away. What you're actually telling yourself is this person has got energy in their body throughout their aura that is really complex and miserable and I don't want a dose of it. So you pull away, you don't want to be a part of it. However, that doesn't mean that you don't have your own mixed up crazy parts of you. And sometimes I've seen people who are side by side, they're almost carbon copies of their negativity, and yet they don't want to be together because they're blaming and shaming one another. It's your fault, I feel uncomfortable. No, it's your fault, I feel uncomfortable. And so they argue and justify and rationalize why they feel negative. Now, you imagine you're one of those negative people and now you're feeling really miserable and now you're aspiring to talk to your spirit guide, okay? How's your spirit guide gonna connect with you with these very etheric, spiritual, higher vibration, divine love? How are they going to come down and connect with your brain that is so mixed up and crazy with worries and anxieties and whatever that you're not seeing straight. The only way they can connect is to come in to you like a crazy person. That makes sense? Now, if you're sitting, uh, meditating, asking that spirit guide to come, and then you have this crazy feeling that someone is in the room, but you're not sure if you trust them, what you're actually looking at is the mirror image of you don't trust yourself. So in order to know your spirit guide, you have got to really surrender your fear, pain, anger, and guilt, and even the sense of loss of things that you've had, which I'm tending to do in another period of free talks. Um, and so in, in order for that spirit guide to come to you, there's three ways they can do it. So let's say this is for analogy of God and Archangel. And they want to come down through the layers to talk to you on earth who's very negative. In order to bring their energy, a higher self, they can't just give you all that pure energy because you can't handle it. Yes, Katie. Ramona has a question. Okay, I, 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 I saw she put her hand up, but I want to finish the concept. Bear with me, Ramona. I'm writing the question down. Okay, good. So um, in order for that high ascended archangel to come down, they have to transition through other mediums on different levels of the spirit world. So in the Akashic records, they're looking for people who they are connected with them and connected with you to pull up those people, use their identities, transition themselves down to a point where they can harmonize with you and show up and talk to you. Make sense? Any questions about that? Yes, Ramona. Um, I want to go back earlier when you were talking about our minds unable to hear the frequency of say aliens or whatever. Does mm. that hold true for everyone? Because if you watch babies, they, they have the same reaction that your animals do when they're hearing and seeing something that, that we aren't hearing or seeing. And I've seen that happen with my niece was a baby. And also too, like in schizo, uh, schizophrenics, you know, they are said to, to imagine voices in their heads because no one else can hear them. But mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to watch one in full blown conversation. And there's no way they were imagining 
that. I, I truly believe that they are hearing. That's what drives them nuts is because they are hearing these yeah, I, I, I would address that it, it all on its own in many ways. Okay. Because, um, number one, I'm going to briefly answer, but it is in itself just a lecture on its own. Okay. Um, basically, infants come in with the pure spirit vibration that they've just left the ones. Okay. Uh, and in the one is they're a pure spirit, so they're able to connect and transform their energy and talk to anybody and everybody in the ones. So when they finally come in and take up residence in the body uh, in the second trimester, they're not staying in the body all the time. So they're coming and going, you know, they come in and kick around and then mother says baby's sleeping, but they're more likely come out and they're going back to the spirit world mm -hmm. and they're catching up and checking on things. Uh, so when, when they come into embodiment finally to be born, uh, and I remember I was given all my birth and stuff that's in my life story. Uh, I remember, stand, and I'm talking so you understand, I remember standing outside of my mother, looking down at her, and I'm a male. I'm, I'm not in a female form. I'm not even prepared for a female form because I, I, I'm, I'm just standing there looking at it. I don't have any concerns whether I'm male or female. I just know I'm male and the baby is female. And it's time for me to enter the body for the birthing. And so I, I said something about now it begins and I just went into the body and then the next thing I knew, I was coming out into the light. And then I heard it, the very last spiritual energy thing that I heard that I understood was Sister Teresa is one of my spirit guides that, who got me through my childhood and adulthood to about 40 years old. I was always there with me. She bonded with me. That's another story. But the, the bottom line was um, she was looking at me and I'm like, I can't control anything. And the last thought I had was the same as I had when I was standing out. Now it begins. And then nothing. I had no words, nothing. I just, this thing. <laughs> uh, and I was aware of, I was just this thing. I didn't have a name for it. I didn't have anything. Uh, and I, but I could see her. Uh, and so what I want you to understand is that what we come in with intellect wise and all that goes into the deep subconscious part of the brain. And it lays there until we have stimuli as we grow older using our five senses on the face to look, hear, see, touch, smell, taste. But every so often, the spirit self back here will send a little message to remind you, you are a spirit. And so at that point, you know, these babies are looking up like this. They're seeing colors. They're, see they're not necessarily seeing faces because faces don't mean anything. My dog is uh, constantly barking at nothing. And I can't, I can't see anything in the room. Um, and I thought, okay, you know, it's not a spirit. And then I finally realized he's barking at shadows because he has cataracts on his eye. Okay. So, uh, you know, I stopped thinking in his spirit present. Well, another day I'm sitting there and he starts barking away. Uh, I'm on the sofa and it's intensely cold. Now I know I've got a spirit guide there. So we have to look for how we feel and, and children, you know, their infants will sense the hot and cold. And if, if they're too hot, they fall asleep. They could be dapping into the deep subconscious or sleeping, uh, or they could be feeling the cold, which makes them uncomfortable. But you're, you're not gonna know really as an adult, right. watching a child, what they're seeing or hearing, because it's so basic, it's primordial it's survival that they are being taught if you like to be aware of the body itself Does that answer your question yeah okay so going back to my understanding of spirit guides 
Um, I have so many spirit guides, I've even stopped asking who are they. But everybody wants to know they are because we are taught on earth that we have to have a relationship. We have a relationship with mum, dad, siblings, and so on, extended family. And then we're taken off to church, synagogue, or whatever, and we're told they're part of our family as well. And so over time, we're adding uh, more and more people to our experiences. And in that way, we're awakening to more of our identity as a human being. Now, while all that's going on, your spirit guides who are like your guardian angels, your protectorates, are uh, working with the deep subconscious to move energy forward into the awareness of a presence, a sense of spiritual presence. And because we're all trundled off to some kind of religion in some way, it becomes God. But in fact, there are many spirit guides and they all are in the God vibration. And so depending on where that individual is at and your soul coding, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, you are going to uh, relate to that entity or many entities uh, and it will be stimulating in the early, early years of your struggling to hold your head up and sit up and eventually walk, uh, those spirit guides are coming in and stimulating neurons in your brain to help you move and walk. They're, they're um, constantly caring for you, protecting you. And my example of my protection was uh, those V-bombs, V1 and V2, the chances, think about it this way, the chances of two rocket bombs going over the top of the building I'm in and landing across the road, literally in the same dynamics, in the same way as a coincidence, is too extremely remote. It's like saying I just won the lottery, you know, I've got a chance in a million of winning the lottery. Now, here I go with my example of that. I was uh, not long in America, not much money, worrying how I could feed the children. I'm standing at the checkout. I'm paying the woman for the food I bought. And all of a sudden, I hear all six numbers for the lottery. So I say to her, I want to buy a lottery ticket right now, and I want the number. And she said, oh, I can't do it. I have to go over here. <clears throat> By the time I went over here, I don't even remember four of the numbers. Mm -hmm. I bought it anyway. And I got, in those days, $175. That was a lot more money in those days, like $2,000 today. <laughs> and that did me for a week or two with food and rent and whatever I had to pay. Helped me a lot. Uh, and... Uh, you know, if I'd have won, remembered the other two numbers, I would have won a million dollars because that was what, how much it was in those days. Uh, I, and I kicked myself all the way home because I couldn't remember it. See, but they gave it to me at a time when I would, had no pen, nothing to write down. You know, why didn't I get all of it? Because it wasn't so much I had to have the money. It was I have to learn to remember what they say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so in the same way, uh, as we go to school and we learn, uh, you know, ABC123, Spirit World is teaching us their world of ABC123. In other words, our psyche, our instinct, our fear, pain, anger, guilt, they're motivating us to uh, know what is right to do and what is wrong to do. Uh, and, you know, there's many instances when you look back through people's lives where they say, I was told you should never do, 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 do what? And then they, they're just so overwhelmed, they just go and do it anyway. And it works out, it's the most amazing thing for them and it leads to other things. And it makes them one day a voice for people to listen to. So we all have rules and regulations here on this planet, but the spirit world will tell us 
by giving us images, pictures, something that's encoded from the back of our brain moving forward. Don't listen to them, go do your thing. And you have to learn to trust that. So when you develop your psychic ability, a lot of uh, emphasis is going into, are you really listening? Are you really hearing? Are you really feeling from back here as opposed to here in the conscious mind? So when people start to uh, you know, get psychic, as they think, a lot of people are in their 40s. Uh, and so they don't have the advantage that children have of growing up with it through the years and evolving as I did, okay? So imagine now, if you will, that you've been blind, as it were, to your spirit guides and you just believed in God uh, and God's protecting you kind of thing. And then you suddenly get this urge in your 40s that you want to study your psyche because it's the in thing to do or it feels right to do because you've had enough of being negative, okay? Well, what you've got to work with then is this because your conscious mind is dominant and it's not going to uh, surrender itself to unknown, because that's too scary, you know? Going back to my analogy of, you know, dog barking and something's in the room and can't feel anything versus when I didn't, it was cold or hot. Well, imagine you've never had that cold or hot feeling and all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're sweating or, you know, and you're thinking, what's going on with me? You know, the temperature is 45 in the house. <laughs> uh, well, what you're doing is your spirit guide is giving you a kind of energy boost, a healing boost, and they're moving your negativity out of the cells in your body. But if nobody's told you that and you've not had any training about that, you're going into a panic about, I must be ill because I'm sweating. I must have a temperature and you're going to take your temperature. It's normal, okay? So energy can be passed by the spirit guides from every cell in your body. And yes, you could have a miracle healing and not even know it. So let's say you were starting cancer and they know your destiny is to become famous for singing, shall we say, okay? And so you can't have cancer at this 15, 20 year old person because you'll never make it to be famous and do all the writing and all the messages and all the things you're gonna do. So they will come to you and they will change your aura. They will change your energy and you will go through these hot and cold sweats and things just like when you have flu, only you're nothing's wrong with you that you can see. But what they're doing is they're changing your aura they're taking all the energy that's negative relative to forming cancer, taking it all away, and you will never ever know that you've been safe from having cancer. You would never know. But then the years go by, and let's say grandma suddenly dies of cancer, and you're running off to the hospital going, oh, I wonder if I, I might be a candidate. You know, I better have my boobies cut off or something. And I've seen people go through that. Uh, and uh, it's unnecessary surgery uh, because I, I could already see that that had been cleared from their energy source and they would never get it. Uh, and I've told them that, but they've still gone and done it uh, and uh, just in case because of fear. Now, if you think about fear, fear is a, a primary existent mode survival. In other words, if you have fear, you run away from something. If you have strength and endurance, you stand and face it, right? So think about your life and think about how many times you have felt that someone's helping you. Anybody? Put your hand up if you want. Yeah, okay, Ted, what do you want to say? You've got to unmark, mark yourself, yeah. Yeah, um, no, I mean, uh... No, there's been plenty of times I, I know I was helped out there um, and uh, protected. But I, I know that Ramona asked a question about the schizophrenic part. Um, I'm interested in that, too, because I was out there when I was out there in my, my drug addiction. I, I heard many things and uh, it was I know it was voices, but I know it was real. And I knew that it was part of the spiritual room. And, um, you know, the thing is, is, is uh, understanding how how does all that happen? How does all that take place? Because 
you know, in, in addiction, you, you basically slip into like a schizophrenia kind of situation because your ego takes place and you start thinking, you know, that you're, you're in control of like everything going on around you. Um, hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to hear that answer that yeah, question. Yeah, I'll answer that question for you. I was going to leave it till a bit later, but I'll answer oh, it. So okay. Because okay. Uh, I wanted to understand how remote the, the spirit world is and yet right on top of you at the same time. It's remote because of the conscious mind being, you know, being in the phrase of negativity. Uh, but it's also distant in terms of when we think of the whole cosmos as the analogy of it, there's so much of it that how do you find your way to the center part that you need versus, you know, say, Rie going to the center part she wants. You know, in energy source, it could be if we could measure it, we would be billions of miles apart. But in unification of the oneness, it's instantaneous that we're there. So our brain can't understand that. So in the same way, when you take drugs where you're stimulating the third eye and the conscious mind to go the opposite way, back through your images, back into the back of your head, it's kind of like going out to play golf with a, a pickleball <laughs> and wondering why you can't make any sense of getting the right, you know, to get the ball to go into the golf ball hole because it's not going anywhere. It's only going a little weight. And now you have to keep going and hitting it again and hitting it again until you get that into the hole. And, and so that's what it's like when you do drugs, you get a glimpse of playing the game, but you're never getting to where you really want to get to. So because your conscious mind gives you a starting point, let's say, I want to see an angel. You go into here you, and you pick an idea of an angel that you might see in a Sunday school or something. And then you take that back here to see an angel but hey, your spirit guides are not appearing to you as angels. Let's say they want to appear to you as a Roman and Greek uh, god, okay? But you're thinking from here, an angel with wings, they can't make you change that vision. So they have to go with what they give you. Uh, and usually, uh, well, I mean, what you've given them. So usually when, when you get to the back here, what they can do is give you you're hurting yourself. So they give you images of things that aren't so good. And a lot of people who do drugs, they, they get terrified while they're, while they're under there. And then, and then they wake up and now they're trying to rationalize what it is that they see. So let's say, um, you know, you're you know, taking the angel scenario, same story, coming back here. And uh, you get to see a fiery dragon, uh, like trying to burn you all up, okay? And then you wake up out of shock and you go, oh, just all where, you know, what's that mean? You don't know, because your brain is all at sixes and sevens of not being able to make sense of it. But what it would mean is, and I'm using that because, you know, it comes all about dragons. <laughs> uh, and so uh, what you've got is, the fact that it's firing at you and burning you up is your spirit guide is trying to say you're doing this the wrong way you're burning up your own energy by doing this you're mm -hmm. destroying yourself by doing this see uh, and that you should understand that a dragon has power and you're misusing your power okay right. and a dragon can fly and you're flying too high you're out of control you know so they will give you something and shock you all the way back to, I can't do this to myself. Well, unfortunately, addiction of the drugs is stronger than the message coming back from the spirit guides. And so people think, oh, I need to know more. I'll go and take more drugs. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be the same with sleeping pills. And I admit I've been taking sleeping pills my whole life because I'm insomnia because of the bombs. Uh, and I've taken myself, even recently, I've been working on my face uh, and I took myself into my mother's womb and saw there that I'd taken on my mother's anger 
And, and then I went from my mother's anger in the womb to her in my grandmother's womb. And I saw the same anger in my grandmother's womb that my mother carried throughout her life. And I, I didn't go any further back. It was enough for me to understand that there is a string of women on my mother's side who have all been born with the energy of anger. Now, the reason I'm saying this and telling you this, I'm going back to before you come into embodiment, you are in the spirit world. So I'd like you to listen to this part and then ask me questions afterwards. OK, um, you as an individual, having lived a life, go into the halls of knowledge and wisdom. There's several halls. I won't explain all that now. And when you go there, you can like sit in this empty room and your whole life that you just lived is flashed before you, all the details, every little bit, okay? And in the process of that, because you're in the spirit world, and you're, you're not listening to a conscious mind, you're in your spirit consciousness, you're able to correlate this last life with all your other past lives, and in the simulation of that, to then come to a congruous idea of what you managed and what you did and feel reasonably satisfied with what you've done. And then you'll go off and sit with spirit guides who are your soul group and or have a discussion on how well we did or didn't do. Now, what are we actually doing? We have to go back in time for this. Imagine, and I'm just, giving you this off the top of my head because it's a full number of the oneness. Imagine you have 144 lives completed, okay, which is 12 times 12, which is the 12, uh, 12 levels of involvement beyond what we understand. Uh, and uh, magnified by 12 is, is uh, how many cells and things we have in our brain so we can receive impulses, it's stuck that science tells me. Okay, so um, here we are in the spirit world processing with these 12 times 12. And so we can see to the dynamic of 144 potential ways we could have, might have, ought to have, should have, would have, maybe did, maybe didn't do, you know, all these excuses. And then we also see, yeah, I went here, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And so I've done quite a lot in this past life. Now I will sit with all the people who have gone before my ancestors. I will sit with all my um, friends and associates I've had throughout my life I've just lived. We congregate, we come together, and with that comes all the spirit guides, guardian angels have worked with all those individuals, okay, while they were on earth as well, as working with you and integrating with you as well. And so we have a mass meeting, if you like, of thousands of entities that come together and they say, let's look at what we've just done. Aha, uh -huh. that's a nice step in the next direction towards rebuilding this world called Earth. Okay, for us now in this time. But imagine we were doing this back in uh, 1066. When, uh, what were we doing? Conquering lands, okay? We would all have gone back to the spirit world and said, okay, so we've just disrupted the entire consciousness of farm life and uh, peace, but we've opened the door for technology. Now, we didn't know what technology was in 1066, but suddenly there were oracles. Suddenly there were people who could draw stuff. And then we go further in time when we've got Nostradamus and psychics and things, you know. Uh, and Leonardo da Vinci, for example, how did he know all those drawings and things that he did for so long ago? All of that was given uh, to him in the life, but he'd already brought it from the oneness back in here. So the spirit guides could then translate it and stimulate him to bring it out. In the same way, I was born with all the knowledge that I've teach, taught throughout my life, but I didn't remember it. They had to come back here, bring it forward in my head here so that I could teach it. Got it? Any questions about that? No, no. I mean, 
but one thing I do have to say is that I did have a bad experience like you're talking about. It was almost like a dragon, I guess. It was pretty much like the my head was gonna get blown off. It was like it was expanding and it was gonna about to pop and everything, and then they stopped. And it was just like, why did I go through that experience? But like, I get why you, how you put it. That makes sense, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. hey, wake up, dude. Come on, get out of this. You know, you're, these drugs are killing you. These drugs are bringing you to a bad place in life. And, and in uh, reality, you know, when you do take drugs, the blood vessels expand. And so you could have also been feeling your brain, you know, pulsating. Oh, with, I mean, it was, it was natural. Through. It was an actual vision because the, the, the guys were laughing too about it being blown, my head being blown up. It's like saying, oh, you're, you're, your eye's going to blow off over the place. Ha, 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 ha. You know, and mm, mm, your head's mm. going to ex- pop and everything. And I was like, I was like, you know, what the heck's going on? You know I mean? You know, it's yeah. just, yeah. So, you know, we can be conscious under the influence of drugs and, and really feel the whole of the body and what it's doing at the time. And we can use that time to dump the negativity. And I admit that I did use grass back when and got some marvelous meditations and things uh, in England, a a time when I needed it. Uh, And and that was good for me. But I had the spirit guides with me moderating and telling me what I can and couldn't do. And during that time, I actually raised the Kundalini for the second time. I did it once when I was a child. I didn't know what it was. It just happened. I suppose spirit guides wanted to get rid of some of the war stuff. Uh, And then I had it again in my mid-60s. So I've raised it three times. But when I say I've raised it, one, this has helped me raise it. So I always tell people, do not try and raise it. Have you raised it then, um, Ramona? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, I've I've often wondered about that. But I do have a question for you. How does reincarnation um, come into all of this? Like well, being it, born. It, it, yeah, but I, you know, and the one is we don't think about it as reincarnation. It is a continuance. Everything so, is a continuance. It's only here that, we, and we've got that because of Ekankar, which was a, a, a religious philosophy. It's pretty old, where they brought this idea in a time when uh, religion said you live and die and you never have any more continuance. Right. So uh, that that was when it, it, it came forward. But from the oneness looking down the other way, it's not reincarnation, you see. It's it's simply you've chosen to come to school again. <laughs> the okay. day, you know, you're coming back here to either uh, be learning something in the human body or you come back to teach something to other humans who are in embodiment. Now, that brings us to another question. How many spirits are actually young, old, and so on? Okay. So if I go back into the oneness, and uh, if you ever feel you want to do heavy reading, then my book, Journey into an Unknown World, The Way to Oneness Revisited, is everything in there you need to learn, plus meditations for hypnosis, that you can you know, moderate yourself and record and listen to your own voice which is way more powerful than listening to my voice because you know as children we're taught follow someone else's rules and then our conscious mind says well I don't know if I like that person or or I trust that person or even if they are wonderful how do I know I'm not going to do it wrong or something whereas when you're guiding yourself and you're listening to your own voice you trust you you trust you 100%. Even if you know you're being an idiot, you trust yourself <laughs> to be yeah. an idiot. You know, so um, those meditations, there's 21 of them in there. You just, they're, they're dryly written. You just put in it, breathe deeply, relax, breathe some more, you know, in between uh, and make your own recording. Okay, coming back to the oneness in terms of the ascended. I, um, this is, I'm giving you a short version. Here's God. This is God all knowing all everything and after a while god says i'm very proud of myself i've done everything now i'm bored i'm sitting here like this and what do i do i encompass all things but how do i know all these things are real 
or proper or working or productive. I need some visuals. I need someone to come down and check it. So God sends a part of itself. And for the analogy, we'll have angels. And angels then came down and saw what was or what wasn't and created in the same image as God can do. And so, you know, when we talk about in the beginning, when was it? That's like saying, well, one trillion billion years ago, God decided something that we can't even begin to imagine. So don't try because you're only going to make yourself get crazy. Okay. I mean, can you imagine living in a vortex world of gas and have consciousness? We think of gas as, you know, turn it on and get my burner to work. Okay. We don't think of gas as a molecule. We don't think of gas as having a consciousness within that molecule to either be light or heavy, to, to live in the ground or to live in the air. We, we don't think about how did that become that? How did, how did it form that? A very long time ago, Spirit Guides gave me a vision where I was from another planet and we went there in the spaceship and we saw, we were investigating this giant ball of gas. And when we saw it, we thought, this is good. It's got moons, it's got this, it's got that. And we put some biochemical, whatever we want to call it, doesn't matter, into the atmosphere of that form so that it would cool itself. Go away a few thousand years, come back, do another biochemical thing, go away, come back. To us, how could someone live that long for billions of years, say for this planet to evolve to be water, land and animals or whatever we're gonna put on it, and then bring creatures, one cell creatures to live in that mire, and then bring two cell creatures or 24 cell creatures as we are. Uh, and, and so, you know, the, the bottom line is evolvement is a mystery to us, but to the oneness, it was just experimentation coming out of a gaseous consciousness of liquid into form in thousands and thousands of different ways. And when you try and ask a spirit guide to explain all that, unless you are a scientist, you're going to be just like me going, uh, it's overwhelming, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So reincarnation is not something that we use in the spirit world. It's like, okay, the world needs a transition, i.e. The, the bug that's around. We can't use the word because we get blocked. Um, and whenever there's a bug that's affecting us worldwide, then that's a time before, long before it happens, maybe 100, 200 years before it happens, uh, entities will start incarnating on Earth with uh, their own little coding from back here that they're going to bring forward in time at some age and give to the world and die. And so we get a string of master teachers to teachers incarnating on Earth and they're different from other people because they bring with them their psyche up front in the conscious mind. And when you think about um, Michael D'Angelo and his painting or, you know, all these different things that each, like, uh, what's his name, the more modern one, uh, Tesla, okay? Um, having all those drawings in his mind and, and telling us about, the anomalies uh, and uh, all the things that are out there in space when we hadn't even got a rocket off the ground. Where did he get all that information where it's in the oneness? And where did the oneness get it from? Well, we've already been to other planets and other places where we know about science. It's just here we have amnesia, right? So coming back to your psychic ability, your psychic senses is actually the wisdom of the oneness. But it's, it's now dormant because you're not switched on. But the minute you start to require it, want it, need it, drive yourself for it, 
you're giving yourself permission to open up and accept it. And of course, as soon as you do that, your conscious mind will tell you, you're being crazy, you're a liar, you're a cheat to yourself, don't follow that. You've heard from church, you know, it's a devil or from the synagogue that it's not following the right philosopher or whatever, you know. Uh, and, and so we, we get in this argument with self. Uh, and so can you imagine what your spirit guides and all these people that you've met in the one is sort of looking at you going, aha, we were waiting for this event. It's time right now. We'll just come in and we'll throw a few lights around the room and uh, make him realize or her realize that um, there's something they have no control over, right? Uh. I, I had that happen when I was lying in bed. I was about seven or eight uh, with my sister and she was sound asleep. Mum had the radio on and music playing and very small apartment we were in. And uh, all of a sudden I had two, two things happen. One is I felt so big in the bed that I was like a giant and I could just put my hand up like that and I would be touching the corner of the room in the ceiling. At the same time, I had this feeling I was so small, it was like an ant in the bed that I, I, I felt that my sister turned over, she squashed me. <laughs> it was two completely opposite dynamics. And at the same time, I'm watching blue and white lights zooming around the room, okay? Now, obviously, I had no, no uh, drugs, nothing, whatever, okay? Um, I do remember that within 24 hours, uh, my, my sister or I, one of us, came down with mumps, okay? And mumps, as you know, uh, you know can, can be a horrible thing whether you have it when you're young, but if you get it as an adult, it's not months anymore, it's uh, a rash. Um, so, uh, you know, these childhood uh, illnesses can also be psychedelic for us because the spirit guides will come in and work with us. My sister was, uh, you know, very young and she got pneumonia when she was under a year. And I remember my parents telling me I had to be really, really quiet because, you know, she might die. And I remember then saying to my spirit guides, please don't let my sister die. And I remember laying back in my bed with my hands like this. And it was like I was sent throwing snowballs in the bedroom. <laughs> That's the way it came to my mind because I was, she was born in January winter with a lot of snow but I didn't make sense of that I wasn't thinking oh she was born in January so we have to have your snow it was just something I did uh, and uh, when I when I told my mum um, uh, you know about it the next day uh, she said uh, oh that's lovely darling but she made no connection whatsoever with it so it was something I took in my heart and never forgot, but I didn't bother to ever mention it and, unless it came up as a story and, as I'm doing right now. And I want you to see, see here again is where the spirit guides use something I knew in order to send some healing to her. Uh, and children know this, they have this idea, but let me come back again to this upper echelon. So, you know, God says, I need to send a part of me into this void of energy and motivate it, drive it. So sends, and in my analogy, because I'm Christian, I use that. So separates self, and, and in that analogy, I use the arm, and send the arm down into whatever was below itself or around itself, and uh, explored. And that one being I made an angel and that angel having explored and fed back to God said the only thing I need to do is to separate just like God separated so in the mirror image I will separate myself and create another angel and so now there's two angels and then after a while those two angels separated again and so on and so on and so on until ultimately there were so many creatures that they created that um you know, it was like overwhelming creatures. What are we going to do with them all? And we're not even on a planet yet. We're still in the oneness. We're still being spirits, entities. 
But after a while, then it becomes, well, we need to try something more physical. So, so from spirit forms, we go into physical forms. And as we go into physical forms, we create physical environments. And then when we've created physical environments, we have to actually go try it out ourselves. So we come into embodiment and we try it. And we learn hard way, usually, and then we die. And then we go back up and we go, well, we did this and this and this, and that affects all these up here are still going, really, really, really? <laughs> uh, and so given eons of time, you could say that all of us vicariously, by being hooked up with other spirits who've incarnated when we haven't, and vice versa, you know, one up, one below, uh, and many at once up here, and many at once down here, i.e. 7 billion of us now plus growing, so we congregate, and in the congregating, whether we're doing it above or below, we are unifying, we are categorizing, we are blogging, logging, if whatever you want to say, on all levels to say of our lives, there is a purpose. And what is the purpose? To keep the God force, the original energy, active. So it doesn't matter as whether you're born to be negative or born to be positive, as long as you interact and cause friction. And when you cause friction, you cause change. And when you cause change, that reflects back in, up into the oneness. And so we're constantly evolving. And what causes friction more than anything else? Imagination, the creative part of us. All right, any questions? No, it just, it, it, it would make sense, but when you look around the world with, with we're not a young world per se, mm -hmm. that when you look in this country and you see the amount of negativity that is going on with all, even with all the new age stuff and you know the from way back to the ancients everything that has been learned up to this point and we're just as primitive today in our actions and it seems like even more so in, even in like a rebellion mm -hmm. against the oneness the the philosophy of the oneness and more knowledge, more evidence uh, evolving has come to the still primitive nature as if we were just created yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's three levels you can look at this on. If you're looking at it from the God level, the spirit level mm -hmm. up here, looking down, uh, Incarnating on earth is about causing the change because if you don't have too many people coming and going all the time, then we would become static. And uh, if you want to say outrageous using one of our words of negativity versus outrageous positive, the pendulum swinging real high, okay, between I can and I can't, I will and I won't, I shall and I shan't. So everything that's going on on this planet is extreme right now. And it's mm -hmm. only when things are extreme that we stop and go, why is this happening? And we stop taking everything for granted and we start looking at what could we improve? What can be better, okay? And at that point, when we start to accept, which is a mass goings on of the people in general, then those who come with this knowledge stored back here, like Tesla, for example, uh, are accepted. And those who come after them take that knowledge because it's in their brain box too. And they start building whatever he was saying he saw in his head. The same with, um, um, I can't think of it, seeing all his drawings, Mike, Michael D'Angelo. Is, is he? No, that's not the right name. Oh. Michelangelo. The one, the one that, um, no, he made it, he did. Da Vinci. Uh, yeah, 
Leonardo da Vinci, thank you, but they would say, uh, he came in with so many drawings in his head, you know, but he didn't know that till he meditated on his candle and the flickering put him into this alternative mode where he could see these images. Uh, and uh, it was in many ways the same for Tesla uh, to, to muse on his images and to go into, you know, and I do the same. I you know, so, so it's very important to take an image, muse on it, and let yourself flow away from here, going back through associated images, going back into what's back here, and let it come out. And not say, oh, this means, but rather let it come and just write it in a book uh, and not try and make sense of it. Because you, I, I've got stuff I wrote in books back in the 1970s that is only making sense now. Uh, so, so we don't get all the pieces of the puzzle in the order that they should fit together that we'd like to think we would get and then therefore building our way up. No, we get a bit here, a bit here, a bit down here, a bit of it, you know. And, and as we get more mature and more trusting in ourselves to be patient and tolerant and expressive of how one wants to be without worrying that Tom, Dick and Harry's gonna judge us, that we start to realize we can put these little gems together and make sense of them. And that's why you hear more of, of you know, great sages of some kind in the past. They struggled, they were treated badly, they were, you know, people were afraid of them because they were different. But by the time they got whatever their news that they were carrying to bring to the world, uh, they were either abused and killed or, or they were cast out and lived on an island somewhere. You know, and that, that applies not just to um, great sages of enlightenment. Uh, let's use Napoleon as an example. You know, he, he knew as a small child that he had a destiny and in his mind, it was to conquer the world and, and uh, you know, have one, one way of, of, of sharing economy and so on. And in many ways, he brought a great deal to the world, but ultimately, he got into greed. And that's, again, why, why would a great leader come to embodiment, conquer the world? Uh, I, I, let's switch over to Hitler as well. Same, same kind of coding, and that's in the... Um, the way to one is uh, revisited book um, at the end uh, because the greater the old soul the more they must fall okay in order to have a great reaction on earth and why do we need a great reaction on earth because we are too uh i can't find the word you know we, we consolidate everything we've experienced sit on the fence and then say, I know everything. And we, we get uh, a big head about it. And, and other people talk to us and say, no, no, I'm right, you're wrong. And, you know, and we're stubborn and we're fixed and we stop growth. So we need someone who's a great age old soul to come down in the body and put out some, they have a good dreamy stuff in the beginning, but then they get pulled into the wakes of what people want, serve the people that way, and the next thing you know, they're the great terror of the century because they've caused the downfall of the world. But they haven't. They've brought change. So if you think about Hitler, you know, and uh, 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 I can't remember his name. The Chi it wasn't the Chinese, uh, uh, not Chinese, sorry, Japanese um, um, prince that was doing all this. It was the Japanese leaders of the, of the uh, navy that started the world war with Americans. It was the same time Hitler started the world war with Europe. And the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. And if you were to watch um, World at War, now the colored version with the professors who've now been able to put the pieces together, why do you see the world changing and shifting and, and everything? So, you know, that second world war was uh, really about let's destroy what was and rebuild what will be. But we hadn't learned and we hadn't ended the Paishian age. So we went into Vietnam and, and all the other wars and Afghan. And Afghanistan is now 
um, you know, the final battle, the final struggle. And it's going to be interesting to see um, how much the Piscean age dwindles away with the Afghan problem. The Taliban, are they really going to rebuild? We don't know. It's a new generation. It's 25 years since the original horrible people were leading. So what are the younger ones going to do? We don't know. We have to wait and see what happens with Kabul. But the, the bottom line is everything that we look at, we can't judge in this point of view up here in the oneness. Because up here in the oneness, it isn't judgeable. It is what it is. It is doing what it is, which is causing us to change. And so the oneness is very happy with us having conflict and all these things coming down because they can see that what is now is also tomorrow and next year and whatever they can see all is now. Okay. So another way for you to look at this is I have a cartwheel. Here's the hub. And the spokes are going out in all directions. Okay. The outer rim is the earth. Okay. So from the hub, we collectively, in a massive group of people, incarnate down different spokes of the wheel. This could be 2,500 years ago. This one could be uh, 100 years ago. This could be 4,500 years in the future. When we go back to the hub, which is all that is, and the oneness is all that is, we could decide to incarnate in what today is our past, okay? And we could go back here and from what is today, incarnate 4,000 years from now and see the future. There's only one law up here. You don't tell what you know in the future here on earth. You don't bring up what you know of the past that was so awful and bring it up on earth. So that's why we are born with no real memories, only textbook written writings or videos that we've got now will be left for us to look at and learn from. And even then, there's not gonna be 100% conscious men memories of all that was in your past lives because they're not relative to now, the time you've incarnated. And if, for example, you die tomorrow and you're back in the spirit world with all your family and all your associate family and all the teachers you met and all the religious philosophers and all the strangers you met and so on, and so, you, you meet them all again and you'll sit there and go, well, wow, we, we did a good job. We did disrupt the history of the past. Now they've got a chance to start a new future. And if you look back at any, any time in history where it's been bad, you can see in a hundred years thereafter, great changes happened on the earth. Okay, make sense? Any questions? Yep, I got a question. Uh, so, well, I guess it's, it's, it's more like what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying because uh, when, when I had a near-death experience, I met the light, and I was shown that was a being of light. Um, and I remembered who I was, and I was like, I was like, I forgot about this, you know? And then uh, I remember uh, when I came back, of course, and I was still going through my lessons and my addiction. I, that's the time I got nine and a half months sober. And uh, but I relapsed because my brother passed away to nine and a half months sobriety. And then uh, that's when I kind of, my eye was already open to like the, the world. And like I saw like when I was out there relapsed and I like, saw all the evil stuff or whatever you want to call it, you know, that like, my eyes were open. And um, so I was going through bad trips. I don't regret it because I look at it today as they were all lessons, that there are all reasons why I need to go through them. So that way I can start learning to heal from my trauma. I realize my trauma is the reason why my addiction took off in the first place and that it's my, you know, my duty to heal and, and move on from the trauma so I can help other people out there mm -hmm. that are stuck in that trauma, especially young, young adults. I have a, I want to become a motivational speaker to help people to, to empower themselves yeah. to be able Let to Let me stop on. you there because I don't want you to spend a lot of time on what you want to do. We're talking about the spirit guides, okay? Oh, okay. I know. So, I, I, yeah, but so, I'm So I've got to keep on book because otherwise we're, we'll run out of time. 
Okay. So, so Margaret, Harry, yeah, is there is there such a thing as a person not having a spirit guide? No. No. Everyone has spirit guides. Now I'm coming back up here again. We have ascended angels, whatever you want to call them. We have people that might turn up looking like aliens or another planet, because right now we're open to that. So they're going to appear looking like, you know, monsters or whatever you want to see them as. Um, but they will give you a full emotional bond in that you feel safe with them. And then as we come down through the layers, we're going to get people who aren't angels. They're going to be like master teachers. They're people that still incarnate a lot like me. Uh, and uh, I'm not bragging I'm a master teacher, but I'm just using me as a model who is born with this knowledge and wisdom and shares it. And there's many of us down right now because we got many kids being born who are born with psychic ability. Whereas when I was born, most of the kids weren't born with any psychic ability. I was a rarity, okay? So it made people pay attention to me. Because if you got, like, if you had 29 Teslas all standing up at the same time, you're going to go, oh, that's interesting. You know, 29 people got the same idea about, you know, the future and da 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 whatever. But each one of those would have a different slant on it. And it might take us another 200 years to integrate their different slants to get the full picture because each one is carrying a piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. But it may sound when we hear it like they've got all of the picture. Okay. So in the same way, when I describe the spirit guides and, and how they're coming down into you in different layers, that's the way it's given to me, but you might talk to another psychic who will say it differently. So there's no written, real, clear understanding. You can only put the pieces of the puzzle together as you evolve yourself. So, okay, so you're coming down in what master teachers, people are born to teach, a paranormal psychic, whatever, work on the, the mind and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, and then you come down underneath that, what we call the helpers or the watchers. And the helpers, they, they will manifest around about you. They could be any, there's no, they're from Sirius or they're from Atlantis or whatever. It, it, they may be, they may show you that if that's where you're at, but it's not a really about where they've been. It's because you're looking for something, they'll give you something. So those people who are helpers will give you uh, some personality traits like they may uh, decide let's take Rio for example being that she's in Japan and let's say you you decide you want a guide who's Japanese so we'll give you a female Japanese who's dressed as a, 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 an ancient high uh, you know girl of the past now you wouldn't know what she is so you would be going okay what what, what, what were you living? What and she'll give you something like she might say um, up in uh, Shibuya area or something, you know. And 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 you think, oh, I have to go to Shibuya, and there's a temple there, and I'm going to sit there and meditate. And while you're sitting there meditating, you suddenly see a, a geisha girl's face, and then you think, oh. I wonder if I was a geisha girl or if she was a geisha girl. You see, you've got, you're guessing. You see what I'm saying? And so I always tell mm -hmm. my students, write things down in a book, the date you saw it and what you saw. Don't try and make all these little bits and pieces come together because it may not be the same spirit giving you that message. You know, just because okay. you're in Japanese in her case and then she's gone to a place where there's a temple and then she's also sitting there and working on it and calculating her conscious mind. It, it could be she's making that image come up because she knows about geisha girls in this time. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, we have to be very careful that we don't bring imagination in. So writing it down, just write exactly what you saw, the date you saw it, how old you were, if you want to, uh, and uh, keep it. And, and keep it and keep it. Uh, I've got books I uh, get out even now, read from Channing in 79. I was still in England. And uh, some of that stuff, I'm going, my gosh, I forgot all that. And it made sense now. 
you know? So, so let's keep notes. Now, coming back to these different guides, once you get past the ones that, uh, that are like watchers and helpers, they, can, they will change their identity a lot. So they could appear to you like the Greek God, or they could appear to you like a nun, or you know, who knows what it's gonna be. And it's all relative to what you're focused on at the time. So uh, for example, when I was 14 and being confirmed, uh, because I had Sister Teresa around me since birth, and she was a nun, I was actually thinking, seriously thinking, well, do I wanna be a nun or a nurse mm -hmm. or a doctor? I uh, deleted doctor because I felt that I was not clever enough because I had a brainy cousin who was 14 and passing all these own levels and he was, you know, that he should take when he's 16 or 17. Uh, and so I'm, oh, I'm, I'm dyslexic, I'm never gonna be a doctor, so I'll, I'll be a nurse. Uh, and in fact, had I become an MD, um, I probably would have got stuck in a rut. But because I went nursing and the things that happened, again, read it in my book, My Life Story, um, the, the transition from being a nurse into going into another marriage, marrying someone who's a psychologist and learning and picking brains and then moving into the psychology of the, and dealing with mentally disturbed patients and seeing all the horrors of things that I'd seen at 16 also with mental patients. So I've been in and out of these things. Uh, it was like the back door. But I'm telling you, my back door taught me way, way more than any college or, or hospital would have taught me. Yeah. Because all they were talking about was electrify the brain or drill a hole in the brain I mean, it's animal stuff, you know, it's so bad. And I, I witnessed all that. Uh, and now today we've got pedia, post-traumatic stress disorder, I have to say it all, attention deficit disorder, you know, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, I said, and there's so many other things that we can now treat, which nobody knew about when I was a child. So we can see here, coming back to the spirit guides who are kind of changing their form for you all the time, that they're working with the constant transition between the way we see this world through these eyes, listen to this world through these ears, speak about it in terms of our judgment and condemnation versus our hopes and dreams. They're the ones working with all of this. And they're going to turn up relative to how you're thinking. So if you're thinking you need a Native American because you're born in America or, you know, and you think their way is the way, then up turns your Native American guides. If, if you think you're, you want to get into Buddhism, then your Buddhism guides turn up. You know? So whatever, wherever you're going, they follow you. And if you're in the darkest mode of yourself uh, and you're calling for help to God, God isn't there, they are. Why? Because they're in your vibration. They know where you're at and they know what you're doing. And they're banging at your door going, ah, 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 ah. no, 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 not that way, this way. <laughs> okay. Because if you pray to God and you ask God to direct mode, if you don't have a true sense of you are connected to God in the heart chakra and feel God, you're only going to feel the spirit guide because that's what you're used to. And the law of karma is like attracts like in the mirror image. So if, if you're in a negative mode, then you have to have a guide who can handle your negative mode. God isn't into negative or positive. God is the I exist, I am, the energy. Got it? Yeah, so... It's interesting because a uh, 16 near death come out of it and what I say is that I am a watcher mm -hmm. and I've felt that ever since. I had a glimpse into the future 50 years 
from then. And mm -hmm. I decided this is a waste of my time. Nothing's going to change. And yet I was sent back to continue doing what I was doing from childhood on, watching, helping, teaching, and learning. Mm -hmm. But it's still the connection that I had with God, let's say, or the consciousness and with humanity of which I did, I knew I was a part of, but separate from. Mm -hmm. And it was the suffering of humanity, people I didn't even know, things that I saw and knew went on that I said, I, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. This is not what, this is not what I wanted. But I would sit back, you know. And well, I'm yeah. Here. Let let me pull you up there and say, you know, your uh, their scenarios uh, were uh, and watching the world, you know, is a, a physical experience. Um, the spirit guides who are coming from the watcher and they don't uh, incarnate at the same time as you do, but you might be in the spirit world when it's your turn, and they'll incarnate and then you'll be watching them. And so there are times when watchers incarnate and they have watchers to got their back and vice versa, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, that's, they're the gatekeepers. They're the ones who try and protect you from yourself or protect you from uh, somebody else in this world or yeah. the, the dark forces and so on and so forth. So I, I want to come down one more step from the watchers and the, the guides to, uh, that are helpers to come down to like very close to us, I'm just making it here, is family, friends, associates that have passed on. They will come back uh, to let you know they're fine in the spirit world. And if you're praying to them, as a lot of families do, to watch over you and keep you safe and so on, uh, that is not a good thing to do because you have to allow them to go back to the oneness and integrate themselves mm -hmm. with the oneness and get their old 100% I know who I am person back. And uh, I can tell you that when my husband passed on the second night after he was gone, I'd already said to him in my own way, you know, you're fine. You can do whatever you want. The one is before he went. And I'd said the same after and burnt the candle and so on. And so I'd gotten in bed on this second night and I just turned on my side and I, it was like somebody was going along my bed clothes. And then it felt like my bed clothes were lifted up. And then my husband got in behind me and put his arm around me and hugged me. And I can tell you for all the years that I have had contact with physical entities in the spirit world, that was the most amazing. I could feel his whole body as tingling energy, solid tingling energy with his arm around me. And I said to him, oh, you're like an angel. And then I said, don't go, I have to get out of the body so I can talk to you. And I felt I never fall asleep in the second that I did. Uh, and, and then I woke up about half an hour later and I couldn't remember a thing. I was so frustrated. But you see, whatever I did with him, he'd come for a reason to tell me whatever. And I had no memory of it. Okay. So time went by and I kept waiting and hoping that he will come back. And of course he hasn't, but my dad on the other hand has come back more a lot. He, he, he makes me really freezing cold when he comes back. Uh, and so I it was musing, I said, oh, you're here. And he just said, Steve is dumping his history. And then he left. So I, I, so, you know, relatives will come and give you a message. And so they're helpful in that way. But you can't keep calling them back. You gotta let them do their thing, you know, on their side. And if they wanna come back, it's usually to warn you that they know they're expecting a passing from a family member or that you're gonna go through some kind of trial and they're trying to warn you to be strong and it's okay, we're here for you kind of feeling. 
but they're a catalyst between your watchers and your helpers and you. They're in between. And you don't want to get them stuck there because they need to go past the watchers and helpers into their own watchers and helpers above that and then into the oneness and the halls of learning and, and stay there and, and work things out and feel they've had a good innings in this life. Make sense? Now I'm going to flip this over and come because we're running out of time, but I, I it's, you, you know, it's so hard to do it in a rush. If a person kills themselves, i.e. drugs or deliberate, whatever, uh, accident, car or whatever, um, if they've got a lot on their mind at the time of dying, they will stay around the earth. They will automatically think, uh, oh, I think, what, there's that car accident up the road? I better get home. And the minute they think home, they're in their house at home here. Uh, and then family is all sitting commiserating and uh, they're like, I'm here, I'm here, so I'm fine, I'm here. Because to them, their spirit body is as solid as their physical body. So they can't tell the difference between their spirit body and their physical body. You understand what I'm saying? They have yeah. all the five senses the same. Yeah. And uh, so the more they hover around the family in the funeral happens, they may be, they're saying, I'm not dead, I'm here, I'm here. And they get frustrated. Now, during all that time, their spirit guide, their watcher, their guide that's closest to this world will come and, and say, come on, you've got to come with me. And it's like, no, I don't know you. Who are you? Aunties and uncles might come. who have long been dead, but they won't come. No, I've got to worry about my immediate family, my kids, you know, whatever. And they won't leave. And then given time, especially if you've been doing drugs and drink, they're looking for it again. And here's where they're naughty, because what they do is they hang in on the family and they influence the family to have a drink on their behalf. And vicariously, they're getting a drink. And the more the family member is drinking, oh, my dad's gone, my mum's gone, or whatever it is, I'm missing them, I don't know how to cope, drink some more, drink some more. They're letting their barrier down, their parent family can come in and be in their head and get taught to them. Now, oh, this is great. You know, my my auntie, mum, dad, whoever it is, is, is now my guide. Well, they're not. They haven't worked out their history. They haven't gone into the halls of learning. They haven't looked at their life to see what's happened. And that's when we call them earthbound. Oh. Now, and, and so when a, a, a relative is earthbound or a friend of a friend or whatever, you know, we, it could be anyone, it really. <clears throat> um, they will make it. Oh, God. <clears throat> Throat chakra. <clears throat> Demonstrating. This is what they're doing. You could lose your voice and not speak very well, just like I am, because they're in your body and you're, they're controlling your brain box, telling you to think and feel everything that they remember and feel and think. And you're reminiscing and that's bonding again and you're bonding their spirit to your body and your spirit in a new form because you already bonded human to human with spirit to spirit there. But now it's different because they don't have a body anymore. So they're going to hang around, you know, that person that they bonded with and feed off their energy. And given time, the human person who's remaining is exhausted, tired, can't sleep because they're there morning, noon and night talking to them. Uh, and so it's very important that uh, psychics as healers are able to go to someone who's been bereaved and talk them into cutting the etheric ribbons uh, and ending that connection with that relative and then wishing them joy to go to the spirit world and asking the higher ascended ones to come in who are helping the workers, watchers, to take that relative into the astral spirit world, whatever you want to call it, where they will then receive help. Now, to make it extreme, let's say we've got a relative who has died five centuries ago, one of your ancestors. It might be part of your work to rescue that ancestor and bring them back to the spirit world 
So they turn up out of the blue, dark and miserable, and you think, I'm being haunted. And da, 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 da. But believe you me, there's a, de <laughs> there's a DNA connection. And it's not to possess you. It's not for you to take on their traits. It's for you to use the power of your spirit to say, I honor and respect the life you live, but it's over, it's done. And I'm here to take you to the spirit world. I was gonna, I'll give you this story, short version. Uh, Natalie Wood, I was uh, in bed late at night, couldn't sleep, took a sleeping pill, still didn't sleep, finally dozed off. And next thing I know, I'm in water and I'm swimming and there's this woman and she's swimming away from me and there's wooden lats here above our heads. And I'm trying to tell her, you're going the wrong way. Turn around, turn around. You have to come this way. But she wouldn't listen. She could hear me because she was resottled, you know, with booze and I knew all that. And she could hear me. And I'm saying, turn around, turn around. And she, and she didn't, she ran out of oxygen. So the next thing I know, I'm taking her into the spirit world and I'm very, very disappointed. I don't know why I'm very disappointed beyond that I haven't rescued her. And I look at her and I said to her, I'm sorry this happened this way, but it'll be okay. You stay here, so I'm gonna help you. And next thing I know, I'm back in my body and I, I'm waking up. And I lay there for a minute, I thought, why, why was that so important to me? Now I fell asleep again. Well, I got up in the morning, I kids are in school and I lined up my ironing board and things in front of the TV to watch the news, which came on at 10 in the morning uh, in those days. You didn't have a lot of broadcasts. And uh, on came the news and uh, important news. Uh, and there was this woman's face and I'm going, that's the woman I was saving. Her. And then it came on, it was Natalie Wood and uh, that she drowned. And of course, there was all that suspicion. I won't go with the story. It did go on when I came up to America. Uh, and uh, I did manage to get a message across via people, via people. And of all the people that uh, ultimately got the message from me was um, Julia, oh, Juliet, uh, gosh, I'm talking to her, making me feel guilty. Juliet Mills. <laughs> Uh, I had her on my show years ago and I told her that I met her at a psychic fair up in Santa Barbara and she sat down. The first thing I had to do was tell her this story about Natalie. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you. She said, well, she was my best friend. You see, so you see how the oneness brings us the information and the connections when mm -hmm. we need it. So I've told that story because I want you to understand if you've got a relative that's hanging around you, you need to ask your workers, your closer guides to this world, to come in and take that relative to heaven, as you might call it, you know, or to the one is to the astral, whatever you call it. Uh, and they will. They'll go and get it, and that person will take them. And when they do, you'll feel lighter, brighter. Now, if we go into the extreme of that 500 year uh, spirit, and I've had to clear some of those, I've had to stand there in front of them and say, what year is it? Oh, you know, it's uh, 14 something or other, okay. And uh, where's your horse? Uh, don't know. And uh, uh, what's the weather like? What country are you in? Uh, you know, ask a few questions like that. And then you, having said that, say, okay, I've heard you. In my time, this is, well, I'm going back to when I was doing it, you know, 1960 something. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, look over here through my eyes, there's a car. You know, look over here through my eyes. Have you ever seen a building like this, that tall? Huh? Nah, what? What? Where am I? It's magic. You're playing up with me. What are you doing to me? And all that kind of talk. And, it's, and then eventually I just said, I'm not doing anything to you. It's your time to leave this world. This world has changed. And, and you know, I did a lot of clearing of lost spirits during those years because of so many wars in the past, especially in England, 
because it's been the center of trade for many years. So I was clearing a lot of earthbound spirits who are very old. But you don't want to be doing that unless you've had the training. So if you feel that you've got a negative energy around you, remember last week, two weeks ago, I told you close down all your chakras. Make sure you close down. If you search your body and you look for that ribbon, cut it so they can't feed off you anymore, okay? And uh, it'll be a etheric or spiritual cord that you will have made with them. Cut it, okay? And then just ask the oneness, the higher guides above, the ones that are just uh, watches and, and guidance for everyday stuff. You want the ones who are dealing with the spirit in the spirit world, we ask them to come and be with you and they'll take that earthbound energy away. Again, coming back to Yuri in Japan, I'm going to give you another little story so you can hear just how old these entities can be. A woman, I was in Osaka, and uh, a woman came for a session. She was beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, pretty woman. And she sat down, and the first thing out of her mouth was, I'm evil. I said, what do you mean you're evil? She says, everybody tells me I'm evil. And uh, I said, well, why? And she said, well, wherever I go, bad things happen after I leave. So I said, I'm looking at spirit and I listened to spirit and I said, sure enough, there was an entity with her. Uh, it's like, is a succubus. Now I have to explain a succubus. A succubus is a fallen angel from the times eons of ages ago when angels came into embodiment to experience human form of a kind. It wasn't like we are today. Uh, and a lot of them got stuck down here, as it says in the Bible anyway. Uh, and so this was one of those. And so she went away. I kept the, this fallen angel with me. She went away and she felt light and bright and free. I lie down that night and now I have to work to get rid of this this uh, entity and of course he's talking to me and telling me that he's going to control me this is a very light version I think the rest of it's in my book my life story uh so I'm not going to tell all the story but the end thing was he was looking like a gnarled um sort of alligator his skin was all like a crocodile okay mm. Uh, and uh, but he was upright. He, I didn't see a tail or anything, but he was upright, and his face was all gnarled and, and horrible. And he put me in his mind in a sulfur bath down in the in the uh, bowels of the earth somewhere. And of course, I'm, I'm in my spirit consciousness, so I'm not burned by it. And he can't understand that. And the more he's trying to tell me that he's going to control me and he's got his millions or millions or whatever beans, imps and things he had with him. Uh, and, and so short version of this was the more he threatened me, the more I just said, you are becoming. That's all I said, you are becoming. And eventually his skin was opening up like a shell and you could see the pink skin underneath. And he's like, what are you doing to me? And fear came. At that point, his minions knew. And I said to him, you've forgotten, you're an angel. And he's like, "And oh, this is falling away. And I said, you have a choice. You can take your minions with you to the astral, or you can go back into the darkness with them. He had to debate which he wanted to do. Fortunately, he wanted to take them into the oneness, which he did. And now today he comes back and he works with me as a healer. And uh, when he turns up, he gives me a golden dragon. So I know it's him. So we even are still rescuing fallen angels. There are so many negative things around this planet. And as I said in my radio show, I think it was, around this earth is all the negativity that any one of us has put out through any time on this planet. It's there. And every so often, we have to gather together and do prayer ring and clear that whole circle. And the COVID and other things like that happening and, and the floods and the earth changing and shifting of its axis is all part of clearing it. It's 
It's part of getting rid of the negativity. Make sense? Any questions about that? So I want you to understand any dark spirits that you pick up when you're working with your psyche, know that they have no control over you. The only thing they can do is talk negatively and fearful. They could show you pictures of, say, uh, a woman being F-U-C-K with an animal, uh, you know, I'm not swearing, but I'm using that word literally is what it means. Uh, and uh, those kind of entities are really ancient, ancient, ancient from times even before Stonehenge or whatever, you know, and you can't take them on with today's consciousness. You have to, if, you, if you're going to be working with that kind of entity, you have to bring your spirit guides, your ascended masters, they'll be there anyway, but you have to knowingly connect with them from the back here and ask them to help you in the guidance to how you talk to such a negative entity. And in the process of doing that, you will be trained, you will be taught what to say and what to do. It will be like being in a trance-like state and you will get that entity to leave you. Regular people just died like a car accident, they're hanging around and all the rest of it. You just say to them, you've passed on. Can you remember your grandma? Oh, yeah, why? Well, she's behind you. Look behind you and there's grandma. They'll see grandma. They'll go to the spirit world. Okay? Makes sense? Have I given you enough information for today? Yep. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah. Do you want me to continue with a few more general classes before I start saying, do you want to go in and be a serious student? How many of you really want to study with me? I can't hear you, Ramona. You might yourself. Oh, I said I. I'm uh, beginning to think that it would be worth my while. Um, hmm. Well, let me just so you could also think about this this way. Katie and I are still fiddling around with prices, but we're comparing it with, uh, you know, college. So if, if you sign up for a course, you know, it's usually what, 10 a unit or something. So it's not gonna be expensive. It's gonna be like going to college, okay? I'm not, I'm not looking for thousands of dollars or <laughs> kind of thing. And the money that we make on here goes back into rebuilding the sites. And Katie's working on that right now, finding someone who can do this for us because we're going around in circles getting nowhere. So, you know, what money that I make with you in this goes back into the pot. It's not going in my pocket. Okay. So think about it. And I do have the psychic development level one class sorted, but I need more students, obviously, because once we get into it, we're not just doing theory. I also want you to be paired up and doing practice and stuff together. So if you know uh, more students, you know, obviously for you, they've got to speak English. Uh, but if you know more students who want to study with me, do share it, uh, you know, across okay. Facebook. And because I, I just <laughs> I had a long talk with uh, Katie. I learned that when I used to be on Facebook years ago, I could just share it to my friends and all my friends got my share, whatever it was. And now I found out from her that sharing doesn't go anywhere back to my page. So if I share to other friends, she says it's, it's not going to their page unless I name them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you I, can put them all down. Yeah, but I, it's 2,500 and something followers I've got. I used to have 5,000 something. Obviously, they've fallen away and whatever they've done with Facebook. But... Can you imagine me sitting there looking for every single name and, uh, and uh, sending them to their page? Yeah, you just don't know if they're even seeing half of your things that you post now the way that uh, exactly. Facebook does it. Um, so, so we're going to look into finding someone else to help her A, rebuild the... Um, I don't know if she's listening. She's probably doing... Okay. Well, why don't you tell her what you're doing? 
<laughs> I'm currently negotiating a price uh, range to have a third party rebuild the entire site, which would allow us to uh, actually for you guys to actually log in as students and in the in the back in, in in the kind of the behind. So in the front, you'll see all the courses in the back, you'll see the actual classes and it'll be the same. Uh, you'll log in, log into the Zoom and uh, you'll get to have uh, private classes and all that kind of stuff. And there will be extensions for one-on-one -on -one services that we provide uh, as well as everything else. So it'll be a one, one shop stop basically. Uh, just okay. like, you know, if you've ever done online university, it is exactly the same. It's the way that we're building it, but it's going to take more than my expertise in order to get over that line. So we're getting someone, she's talking with someone. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Uh, uh, and uh, we don't know how long it's going to take. So meanwhile, uh, you know, I'm still doing everything for free. And the other thing uh, that I've got to do is I'm going to do some later when I get off here. I'm going to do some short on Sumaris. We've got topics and I'm going to do a short little video about what each topic is. Yeah. Uh, so she'll put that up and so you might want to look at that and see if you want to come on for the free talks on that as well <laughs> okay and then also too i might suggest um to periodically put links to us so that we can share those links out to the academy site would you, you know would for you our friends would you rather me uh tag just tag you in the post that i put up um yeah, and then I'll get it. Yeah. I and can... I'll get the notification. And then I I, cause I know who's into, you know, of my friends. I only have like 400 and something, but I know them personally, except for five. Mm. And I know which ones are into this type of training so I can send it to them. Mm, um, be so helpful, Ramona. Thank yeah. you. And, and also to... to um, you know, to know that some are working, some aren't, you know, so please think about that when you're thinking of the course prices. Mm. Uh, well, and, we're, you know, on average, the, the uh, local college here, I think it's $10 a unit. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, it's not going to be 15. that. 15. Yeah, something like that. So, it, it, you know, and I think we're looking at three three units, so it's not going to be that expensive. You yeah, know, we're just trying to make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's it, it's more about getting the people to know that they can come online and get training. And I like when I say training, I'm meaning really. I mean, like you, if, if you, you the classes that we're doing right now, this is the type of type of uh, education that you receive. It's quite heavy and in-depth well actually this is just a banana it was oh, like a spot yeah. in the ocean i mean yeah. Rie, if you talk to like uh, uh remy you know who went through all my classes uh she studied with me for 10 years and each one of the classes i did uh was five levels and then there were workshops in between. And I mean, I was coming to Japan for a long time. Uh, I so love teaching the Japanese because you're so clever, you can absorb info. But I'm not going to teach them as intensely online here for the world because not everybody is able to study the way Japanese can because they're taught at two years old. Uh, you have your, your own language, you two sorts of writing, you learn English, you have to do your math and you have to be able to uh, integrate in play school by the time you're three, right? Three and four years old, you're learning all that. Here in America, they don't go to school till six. <laughs> uh, in England, you go to school at four. So, so four here. Is it where you are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless they've changed it since I, you know, but I was in kindergarten at four years old. Yeah. No, here, uh, mostly it's happening. I mean, when you look, talk about play school, they're literally playing. They're not, they're not teachers, they're childminders. But anyway, you get the idea, you know, so Ria, you, it, Ria if you can also tell any of the girls that you know are uh, able to speak English, I would appreciate that too. Yes. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And, and Rhea, I've just sent you a friend request. I know you've just accepted it. Um, yes, I did. Yeah, uh, you're going to see a lot of the, a lot of the marketing I do, you'll see up on my wall. You probably, if you go over to my profile, you'll see this this class exactly advertised as as, as is. So you once you're connected to me, you're going to see everything that goes on. Okay. And also, Rie, um, I'm doing two nights in September again for readings. Hmm. Yes, so, I do. So, yeah, so if you know anyone that needs my help, you mm. know, it would be grateful to spread the word. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I I I I don't want to be selfish and hog you for for just promotion, but you know, word of mouth is the best thing. It always has been. Yeah. You know, recommendations. You we trust one another. When somebody tells us, "Go and have my nails done here," <laughs> we yeah. go, "Okay." You know. So it's the yeah. same with classes. And okay. When everything- when everything is up and running properly, like in terms of the website, uh, that leaves me a lot more time to uh, start my curriculum as well. So it won't just be Margaret that's teaching; it'll be me as well. Uh, mm. I'm doing I'm doing metaphysics, psychiatry, and psychology. So um, these are very heavy, heavy subjects that can go on forever. So yeah. Mm. And, and you know what I was thinking? Oh, I, I was, was thinking... just going to sorry. I was just going to say to Rie that. Um, I'm also getting uh, Remy back, I uh, hope, because um, she's now ready for her professorship. And if she's teaching online, that's going to make it even better for her to teach as well. So uh, she's vice president of UCC. So we're, we're, we're building, you know. And oh, the other thing is, if you know anyone who speaks uh, Spanish or French, we'd like to get them to teach you know, if they know these things <laughs> oh. or, or they can be an interpreter for me. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because uh, we're going global, that means we're offering other languages to to attach to other more prominent language like Hispanic community. And uh, and of course, we do have we do have uh, a group of students also, too, that uh, are coming from Uganda. Um, and so Ugandan will, is another language that we'll be interpreting very soon. Mm, okay. She's working on that. So, you know, it's there. We've got these little fingers in these pies, but we don't quite know where the pies are. <laughs> you know, well, so we need help. Yeah. If you if you can, can actually like a poster or cards, I can post them out, especially in Houston around in Houston because it's a very uh, psychic community that's alive and well. And mm-hmm. I have people that can post things up in Dallas. You okay. mean real posters on real walls? So you're yeah. Thinking? Yeah, because they, yeah. they allow you to go in to stores wherever you go, leave a card, you know, to advertise yourself. So, uh, and people do check those boards and, and look through the universities and stuff like that. So it, that's just something for you to think about. Mm. I don't think we're, I was looking for a pen. Because this is a university, you know, Texas A&M, Prairie View, you know, mm. the University mm. of Texas, all of that is around. I so, think I've lost all my pen, so I can't write it down. So Katie, you'll have to remember for me. To- <laughs> sure. Yeah. Work so, a poster out, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I and used to make up. all the posters myself back in those days, so uh, that's something I could do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, people still do it, you know. Do they and, still have those little tag things on the bottom? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. they do. <laughs> so, all right, so I, I'll, I'll work on that too, but uh, okay. I've got to work on these talks as well. I'm going to be doing on the other one, yeah. All right, so anything else? Anybody got some suggestions? Where's Ted? Is he, is he gone? No, nope, I'm right here. Okay, you got any ideas, Ted? Uh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll make sure I get the word out to uh, anybody I know that would be interested. Mm-hmm, that'd be helpful, thank you. We'll probably do uh, talk, these, these type of uh, talks and intro talks and whatever. Uh, we're going to be doing them bi- bi-monthly. Um, so, no, hang on, bi-weekly, sorry. Mm. I knew what you meant. I'm saying yes, but twi- twice a month. <laughs> yeah, twice a month we'll be doing these talks as well. So yeah. If you and ever- that's once in a while we might have a third 
uh, one. We might throw a toss something in there, but you know, it, it's uh, either that or we have to choose like the second and fourth week. We'll have to condense this. But at the moment, we're just picking up from where we left off last time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you for coming back. I really appreciate that, giving me an opportunity to teach you. I hope you were satisfied this time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? We were Everything was good. Time. Thank you. Thank you. So um, next time when you come back, I will go back down to the dark side, okay? Um, if if uh, you want to know more we have the dark side and the light side of the oneness books you, you know if you listen to these two you might want to read those two books and you can get the ebook uh, either katie can send it to you as a download because she's got them in her yeah because we don't know what's going on with a, a, a amazon right now they're messing us about Unfortunately. Yeah, just, just contact me and I'll I'll give you the give you the book itself. You can have a read of it um, and all of that jazz. Uh, outside of that, um, uh, re also too that the the link. Obviously, you'll see the advertisements for for these classes that we're doing. Um, the Zoom link is going to stay the same until and, unless we change it. So uh, all you got to do is just look out. Look out for the, the advertisement. N know that it's going to be. The next one is going to be scheduled on the 5th. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm so disorganized here because I, I was on the phone, but I haven't got a pain. You'll have to tell me later. I'll tell you later. That's okay. <laughs> All right. One will be on so, the, uh, and I'll put out the advertisements. It'll be the same Zoom link for anyone who is curious to know. Okay. It'll be advertised again anyways with the same link and all that jazz. So yeah. That's for Central uh, Eastern Time. No, for Central Time, 5 Eastern. Yeah, 5 Eastern and uh, 3, no, 2, 2. Or two, you, two Arizona time, which is Pacific yeah. time at the moment. Uh, and uh, then um, DC time, East Coast is three hours later. 6 a.m. in Tokyo. 6 a.m. She's so good. Monday. She's such a good girl. God. Well, I you you almost had my mother in, uh, and she's like, I'm on holiday right now, but I wish I could be there. And it would be uh around five or six o'clock in the morning as well over in Australia. Mm. But you know, it's also recorded. So uh, if you miss one, you can't get up. I understand. Just shoot us a line that you're missing it, and then Katie will send it to you so you can I'm listen to it. I'm, I'm actually uploading it to YouTube as an unlisted video, so you can you can rewatch it as many times as you want. Okay, good. And, and, it'll, and it, also, Jared. Yeah, and also if you go over to my YouTube channel, I'll, I'll put the link right here. Um, if you go over to my YouTube channel, you're also going to see all the other videos that Margaret does uh, regarding the different talks that she does for her radio show which is also a precursor to all of this as well. There's a lot there. Yeah. I've also got, the because she's taught me how to do it, I've been doing the audio and video side by side of my talks. So if, if you like watching me, then you can go to the YouTube page. And if you like just to listen to me, then you can go to the radio show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, there's actually a playlist called Soma Fusion Academy and Samaras Education Center. It has all of the videos. Oh, sorry. Uh, you found my channel. <laughs> yeah, you'll see the playlist. It has, uh, and the show that, that Margaret and I do on a Saturday night is also up. Also up. Yeah, there's a lot. We've been doing a lot. There's a lot to hear us and learn from. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the same same night as my show, so yeah, yeah, you on, you, you know, the archives and listen to it. But last night was a really good show. Oh, I was in a mood. I was in a <laughs> funny mood. <laughs> so okay, so I think we we we're, we're done, right? So we all want to go back and get into our lives right now, okay? So I want to finally thank you all for coming, and then it's up to me to shut you all out by pressing <laughs> end, right? 
Okay, or, or, or have you still got control, Katie? We both got control. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, so I'm getting to get used to doing this. I am going to end it. Thank you, everybody. Right, thank you. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. End meeting.